Okay, we have Mr. Rafat. How are you, Rafat? No. Yes. Uh, are you live? Sorry? Are you live? Yes, I'm live. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm an ex-Muslim. And, uh, well, I am actually trying to figure out Bible. So, I have a question. Are you willing to answer that? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, I can take out the words, but I think it was in Matthew where uh, Christ says something about uh, not marrying a divorcee woman. And that uh, means uh, it so, will say, be an say adultery. Again, say, say again, please, story. So what? Uh, here, uh, here Jesus Christ talks about uh, not marrying a divorcee woman, hmm. like a woman who got divorced. Okay. And that would lead to adultery. I don't understand that. Well, because a woman, she is divorced because of adultery. So she is adulterous. So Mary. No, but then why would a man marry her and that would be an adultery? Because she is divorced of adulteress. So she is an adulteress. And now she is committing sin. And uh, because of her sin, she is divorced. So marrying a woman who is divorced from a man uh, because of adultery is adultery. Why? Because simply marriage between men and women. Nobody can break it. She is still considered as married to the previous husband, even though they are divorced. For God, okay. So when God, you know, approved the marriage, the man and the woman they became one, one person. So now, yeah, a, a, a person he divorced his wife. Okay, and let us say yeah. she did something wrong, but still she is married. In the eye of God, okay. she is married. So you are marrying a married, yeah. you are marrying a married woman. She is not really divorced. Secondly, but, if she is divorced because yeah. of adultery, she is a, you know, yeah. that is the reason not to marry her because you are, you know, you're having you're having an agreement of marrying someone he practices it. He don't see a problem. But like, it. yeah, I obviously like it does make sense at a point. But does it still apply? Like, if what if the husband was abusive or something wrong is happening in that marriage, see, and she can get a second chance? Adultery in the Bible is not only about a person having sex out of marriage. So the Bible says that the earth committed adultery. The earth, the whole earth. So earth committing adultery does not mean the earth having sex. Adultery in the Bible is committing great sin against God. So if a man is abusive okay. to his wife, he is committing adultery too. Because he, okay. made a, he made a promise. This is not against the women. It's against both. Yeah. So the man who made a promise to be good to his wife and he break his promise, he is committing adultery too. So the woman she can okay. get rid of him. You know what I mean? So yeah. let's say a man, yeah, sure. a man he marry a woman, he beat her every day. And from the morning he start beating her. All right? Okay. Yeah. Well, this is not a husband. This is an idiot. He's a criminal. So does that mean yeah. that the man he can do that and Jesus give him license uh, because now she cannot divorce? No. Adultery is not specifically only about cheating. In fact, adultery is a great sin against God. So whoever break the, the, the command or let's say the, the agreement is the one breaking it, is the one committing the sin. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. yeah, totally. Yeah. So when you break, let's say me, me and you, we, we agree that the one, uh, you know, let's say you are from India. Yeah, I'm from India. Okay. Let's say I'm an Indian too. I love Indian people. So let's <laughs> say I'm from India. And now we agree that the yeah. one who sell a secret of India to the enemies he is a betray he's betraying the country. We agree, me and you, right? Yeah, sure. And then an Indian person, he go and have a contract with someone he sold the secret of the country to the enemies. That person, he is betraying his country too. Yeah. Even though he is not the one who sold the secrets. You know, you know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So yes. in Christianity, our marriage is not marriage between two people. It's marriage with agreement of God. So we make... Yeah, it's like one soul becoming one, uh, exactly. two souls becoming one. Yeah, but under yeah. what? Under the command of God. Under the God is exists there. It's not just a it's not a sexual contract. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not a yes, sexual yes, contract. Totally. So there's a unity. This is why the Bible says the man he leave his uh, his parents and he became with his one, one echad. Even the same word for you is God, echad. 
So the the, the oneness of of uh, of the, the two people is happening not because of the nature of the body, but because the nature of God. God He made them one. So when one of them or maybe two of them, they broke that command and they broke that oneness that happened. Uh, uh, you know, they betray God command. Yeah. And then they have to see, okay. you know, at the same time, okay, way, uh, even, TV, even, if a, TV, uh, even if a person do that, yes, you see, God is, you yes. know, we say God is always, is, is all merciful, right? So there's people, they have, yeah. they go through things, their husband is abusive, their husband is bad, their husband is doing crazy stuff to them. Uh, a man, he stopped having sex with his wife, a man, he tried to punish her, whatever, crazy stuff. You know, life is full of stories. So we don't judge the women because uh, uh, of a, a word divorce. We judge, okay. you know, the, the Bible says, from their fruits, what she did. from their fruits, you shall know them. So you don't say, okay. you don't say she have a tree. Yeah. And she she left that a tree. No, we have to look at the tree fruits. Then we will know why she left. If the tree fruits was good, and then the woman, she left the husband who have a good fruit, she have no excuse. She is breaking the order or breaking the command. Same for yes. the man. If the women she have good fruits, why he leave? You know, just because he find a new wife. Yeah. Maybe she is pretty, exactly. She's more pretty. She is younger. This is what men do, right? The the men. Yeah. They go after women <laughs> uh, as as long as yes. she is beautiful. You know, when she is beautiful, he call her honey. He yeah. open he open the door for her. He buy her flower. You know, and then she give him first baby, and then yeah. second baby, and then she have a Billy, and then you look at her. Look what was what, what I have. You go in the street, you see a nice, good looking woman wearing jeans. Suddenly, this is here. This is his new honey. You forget about the previous honey. You know. So Jesus was fighting those people who they are changing women just for the sake of their pleasure. Are you with me? Got you, CP. All, all, all got it inside my head. Thank you so much. Yeah. And so, um, so my friend, I would I, like to tell you, like, yeah. Um, I was, I was born Muslim, and then uh, I was discovering this ex-Muslim channel. Then I came across your channel, and that helped me so much. Like even now, I make my parents question their faith with your words. Like I ask them the exact question that you do, and they are like shocked. They are like completely like. They have no idea what to say and i'm so glad because you did this and thank you so much and just one last thing okay um i'm i'm trying to convert to christianity i'm trying to read bible and everything but uh where do you recommend me to start and how do i pray i just don't understand how do i pray you know first of all we have uh, we have to understand what the word the prayer mean what what pray mean like for when I was a Muslim, like it was usually like five times a day going yeah, and see, uh, talking this to. This is not a prayer, yeah. really. This is just a, a silly thing. You are repeating yourself. You are repeating actually what Allah is. Yes. You know. So this yes. is stupid. I mean, uh, I call you. Imagine, like let's say you give me your phone number and I call you and I say, uh, uh, my name is uh, Falafel. I like Falafel. Praise be to the Falafel. The Falafel is wonderful. Falafel, nice to meet you, Falafel. Good to be by Falafel. I mean. But this is what I said to you, what you said to me. And I call yeah. you to repeat what you said to me. This is stupid. So in Christianity, we don't have such a silly thing. Prayer is a relationship between you and God. And you do not need me to teach you how to pray. This is, should be something coming from your heart. If it is something written by somebody else, this is not even your prayer no more. If I write for you a prayer and says, pray like this. So when they asked Jesus, he said, how will you pray? Jesus was not teaching really how to pray. He was teaching them what to include in your prayer. What is the most important is the important is to forgive others before you ask for forgiveness. So we have something it's called the Lord Prayer. You can search it in Google and you can read it. It's beautiful. Yeah. But he was not okay. teaching them really how to pray as much he was teaching them what is making your prayer accepted. And that the most important things is to ask for forgiveness only if you forgive to others. If you are not willing to forgive to others, so why that you are asking the Lord to forgive you? You know what I mean? That gave me goosebumps totally. So thank you so much. Yeah. So why I want to pray 
and uh, is, is my prayer about me playing yoga you know like in as long as you're an indian like the the the, yeah. the hindu they have the yoga which is nothing but self-esteem and self-worship you know i don't like yeah. such a, a practice because i forget about the whole world and i focus on myself in, in jesus name we don't focus on ourselves we focus on others so before i say god me 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 save me i say god i forgive the one who hurt me i say god forgive to them what they did to me and this is what jesus did in the cross he says father forgive them he was saying to who to those who did put nails a second ago in his arms and his feet father forgive them to who to those who put an arrow in his chest father forgive them to who to those who gave him vinegar as a drink god forgive them those who just insulted him they said to him if you are the son of god save yourself yet he forget everything they did to him and he said father forgive them they do not know what they are doing so in order for us to be praying we have to understand what the prayer is and the prayer is start from me being a person who is not just thinking about my salvation but i'm thinking about others i'm a person who is serving the lord and in my way there is things happened those things need support of the lord so i prayed for him i say our father out of heaven hallowed by the name the kingdom come they will be done in earth or is in heaven i'm confirming that god have authority of, upon me i'm confirming that i am listening to him and i am sure whatever he decided is going to happen and then right away i after i confirm that the lord is my lord i say and god forgive us for our transgress as we forgive to those who transgress against us so here i'm asking the lord i deserve your forgiveness because i forgive if i don't forgive i'm a hypocrite because i don't mean it i'm selfish i'm asking you to forgive me but yet i'm not willing to forgive others for what they did to me so why i deserve to be forgiven so will jesus uh, uh, my friend i don't know your name you do not need me to teach you how to pray just give your heart to the lord and he is listening you see each one of us is an individual he have his own let us say aquarium you know a fish you have an aquarium right they put him you know there's, there's a fish is in the river there's a fish is in the ocean that is a big aquarium you are the same yeah. and you have an aquarium around you and your aquarium is different from mine there's somebody who's suffering is from a family members somebody is suffering from work people from city people from uh, whatever people around him but all of us we have suffering this is the only thing we share together but our suffering will be different our problem our problems doesn't matter what we call them and if we depend on ourselves to solve our problems mostly is not going to be something very successful for always a human being think when he solves his problem think only about himself the most successful so you know let's say problem solving is when i am taking christ as a guidance for me to solve my issues so i don't think about myself only i think about how i solve my problem yet i forgive those who cause the problem for me and that will clean me from inside from my hatred you see uh hatred is like you know somebody he he, he eat healthy food and then he take a two drop of poison with it it's called hatred you know because the hatred yeah. of something is inside you not inside the one you hate you know it is it's hurting you it's not hurting the one the one maybe he don't even know about it so when you have your hatred inside you it's hurting you it's bothering you you can't be asleep you can't enjoy your life because your hatred is killing you so jesus he wanted you to get rid of your hatred in order to be hate free and then you can be qualified to be a person who pray and talk to him because you cannot be in the same level as i am when you are coming with your hatred and your madness and your evil 
So we have not to think about our evil, our echo, our think about, about our yoga. We have to get out of the box and we have to be grateful for the Lord and at the same time forgiveness, giving for those who hurt us. And then the Lord, he will welcome us in our house. It's like having a card, a membership. And this membership says, in order to get into my house, your feet have to be clean. And then you look at your feet and you see how, <laughs> you see how dirty it is. I just stare yeah. at the person in my way. I just step at my friend in my way. I just sent gossip about my friend. I just made a lie about somebody. So my feet is so dirty, and then I'm going to go in the house of the Lord with dirty feet. You are not qualified to enter. So when you pray to the Lord, my friend, I advise you, clean your feet, forgive others who hurt you, so the Lord will forgive you, and that will make your feet cleaner from your sin, because you decide not to do sure. it again. So, Yes. Don't think as a Muslim when you see is uh, think about Christianity. Christ is different person, mm. different level, and we don't repeat prayer. Every day you can say a new prayer because every day you have a new problem. Every day tomorrow you might be a new person. Me, ten years ago is not me today. So if I say the yeah. same prayer, I'm fooling myself because my prayer ten years ago it was different from my prayer today. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> And if there's any other questions, I will be happy to hear you. No, no, no. And if I do have any question, I'll just type it out to you in Skype. You I'm just reading Bible and going through it. I take a call from ex-Muslims because my job is to make people ex-Muslims. But listen, yes, yes, before, sir, obviously, before, obviously. before you leave, because now you said you are yes. you are using my words to speak to your parents and they don't know what yeah. I want to advise you. Don't use the word potato, okay? <laughs> 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 I will. Surely. Don't use it with your parents. That would not be nice. Um, and but but uh, it was so shocking for them as well. They were like, they don't know how to answer me now. They're like, if you don't want to believe, don't believe. I don't care. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. See, always when you show people something and it's about belief, it's going to be shocking for them. But uh, if you are consistent and you show them proofs and reference, by time they will give up and they will they, they will they will they will come to the truth. You know. You can deny. Yeah. You can deny that you're. Let us say, like somebody saying to me, uh, "Your socks smell," which is true, by the way. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and then I say, "No, no, no, they smell so good." And you know, like you know. Uh, and then one day I was sit alone, and, I, uh, and my foot will be close to my, to like I put it in the top of the other leg, and like, what the heck? <laughs> the smell is disgusting. So I can deny it for some time, but for lo how long? Yeah. The smell is going to grow bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it became a bomb. So that, that bomb day is coming, just be consistent and they will leave. But let me ask you, as long you are saying, you are thinking of Christianity, what yeah. about me and you now, even though I'm here for many hours, but I will be happy if I can help you to accept Christ today. What is stopping you yeah, from accepting I'm, I'm, Christ? Yeah, I need it. Okay, so what is stopping you from accepting Christ today? Uh, I think I, uh, the way I treated Islam, because I wanted to get to know as much as I can, so I'm not saying I don't want to, but I really want to. That's why I'm reading Bible and I'm getting to know about everything that Jesus preaches. Okay. So, yeah. So anything, if there's anything, you know, I mean, Christ is a wonderful person. I don't know if you, uh, how you think about him for now. And for me... I do. I do. Yeah. Because, uh, okay, CP, I'll get a little personal. When I was a child, I was sexually assaulted mm -hmm. and I was going to a missionary school. I was, uh, there was a church and I don't know why, for some reason, I always go to the chapel and just talk to Jesus one-to-one, -one, even though I was not born in a Christian family, but I just felt some type of peace. Mm -hmm. And now that I come to at the age of 20 and I realize that what I've been brought up into and like how my parents think of the world, I do not personally stand by a lot of things that Muhammad did. And that's why I was like, you know what, I want to go back to that gut feeling that I had when I was a child, when I was getting abused. And I just wanted to go to the chapel and just talk to God, just talk to Jesus, no matter which form, which person anyone wants to call him. And I did that. And now that I'm discovering, and even I saw the case for Christ, I, I'm, I, I was reading the book as well, and it formed my faith in Christ. And yeah. So when you were when you were a Muslim, you were you were sexually abused. You said, and uh, the, is that the reason you left Islam? Uh, no, but 
the reason the thing that mohammed did to aisha that mm. did not felt right to me as a abuser like as a mm. child abuse victim so mm, okay. i wanted to go back to that and then i discovered a lot of flaws in islam uh, scientific flaws a, a contradiction in quran itself and a lot of things that just didn't make sense to me like shaitan sitting in your nose shaitan mean everywhere like all the stupidity that's true and no, no, no. Yeah, that's right. hold on hold on come on i saw once well, let me i'll tell you this is a true story sahih bukhari <laughs> once i was asleep and, and my uncle wife she opened the door and she said that she saw two shoes coming from my nose <laughs> You know, but at that time there's no video. True sister, this, I swear by Allah, yeah. it's a true story. And then I woke up in the morning and she told me, and then I believe that this is Shaitan was sleeping in my nose. True story, true story. This is what we can do, you know. So they fabricate stories and they you know, repeat a lie, and then you believe in a lie. But let, let me let me go with you here. Listen, you see, we don't want to believe in Christ because we went through hard time. We hmm. want to believe in Christ, for He is. The savior it doesn't matter how good the time or how bad the time is because if i go to a person because i need help in a moment then i might leave that person when the help is not needed you know what i mean yeah so don't think about christ the same like this so i'm not going to believe in christ because uh let us say i'm sick and i need to be healed and then, okay, I'm healed now. I do not need Christ no more. Bye-bye, Christ. I'm going to go to night club. So we don't want to do that. We want to believe in Christ for the quality of a Christ. Not because of our needs. Because our needs change. And if we change God, the bent in our needs, then we will never have God. And we will never have faith. And we will never have any value. Because we are people who change their you know their color like a lizard you know some lizard they go in the yeah. rock we are fragile minded people yeah. yes so we don't do that we want to believe in christ if he is good for his goodness that's it if he is good to be our lord then he is our lord if he's not he is not not because i need him today and maybe i will not need him tomorrow so for me i prefer you to think about christ as salvation but not because he have a boat to grab your hand for the moment. And then after he grab your hand and he deliver you to the land, you say to him, bye-bye. Nice, nice meeting you. <laughs> I want you yes. to think about being with the Christ. You want to be in his boat all the time. Regardless if you need or don't, for this is your joy and this is what you love to be. People who love... They don't love because of things somebody he have. As an example, you know, you might see a, a, a woman, uh, she love a poor man. And you wonder why mm. she, what she loved about him. Maybe he don't even look good, but she loved him. Yeah. You know, that is love. Actually, that convinced me more that she loved him because he have nothing to offer. Still, she want to be with him. That is telling me that she have something special to this person. Same with God. Most of us, you know, we cheat in ourselves. We claim that we want God because we love Him, but the fact we want something from Him. I want yeah. to be. I want to buy a house. I want to buy a car. I want God give me money. God make me successful. My God make me pass the exam. God find me a nice handsome uh, husband, please God. You know, like okay. so. God is like you know, like a, like going to grocery shopping. And he is your is like a credit card. You know, He is the one who will give yeah. you. What do you want? This is not the God we want, and this is not Jesus. We want God, and we will love in God, even if we have a horrible life in our life. Suffering is not a sign that God is not looking at me. It can be the opposite. Most mm -hmm. of people actually who don't have suffering, they are spoiled and they end dying from drugs because they were spoiled. You will notice that an Indian person who come from India to America, who suffer in mm. his life, he is way more successful than an American born person. An immigrant, he come to America 20 years after, he have a nice house, he have a nice car, he have a nice uh, job, he have nice uh, good, good income. A person who is born in this country, he did not suffer to get a visa and to travel and to get the green card and to get the citizenship, he suffers zero. Still, he cannot even find a job. Why? Because he did not go through suffering. 
So for us as a yeah. Christian, suffering is the same as a process of making steel. Iron is a steel only when it goes through special kind of suffering, special kind of a treatment. So suffering can make you a stronger person is not a bad thing. So always you need to think about Jesus that he is going to be your guidance to be strongest or stronger, a better person, not a credit card who will buy you things or he will buy you a ticket to heaven or he will buy you a car. He is a savior, not a business management person. Are you with me? Yes, yes, totally. Like, I'm just a little emotional. So what do you think about accepting Christ? You know, if you feel like you you, you want to accept him, feel free. I cannot, I cannot hold you. Yeah, I do want to. I do want to. I believe in him. So why, like, you don't so, say, why you don't why you don't accept him? Then why you don't say I believe in Jesus? I, I really want to I want to be his I want to be the child of God right now. Yeah, I I do want to be a child of God. I do want to be a Christian. I do want to believe in Jesus Christ. Everything that I think every doubt I had, you just cleared it out. You just made it more clearer. So why now you speak to him? Let everybody hear you. The Lord is the Lord. He says, every two of you mention my name. I will be between them. I will be the third. So the Lord right now is listening to you. And you can say to him whatever you want. You can say to him, I accept you as Lord, as Savior. You can say, say to him, I'm thinking about whatever you want. I'm, I'm not going to push you to say, but as long you feel it, I think this is the best choice. I was saying to the person before you, I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. I do not know if I'm going to wake up tomorrow. Who knows? I want to be saved. I don't want to do gambling. And as long as I trust that he is the one, why I want to wait until tomorrow. So my sister in Christ, you are a Christian yet, but I can say, I can feel that you have him in your heart. Why we don't announce today that we accept Christ as our Lord, as Savior? Go ahead, say whatever you want. Uh, so like I just say it right now. Yeah, you, do, you, yeah. do you like to accept Jesus as your Lord? Yeah, I I do accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and now I do see it clearer. Whatever I suffered through just made me a better person, and that is because God wanted me to be like this. And I I I'm just so thankful. I'm just so grateful for for listening to me in those tough times, for hearing me out when I was crying in the chapel as a child, and I felt so at peace. When I was with him, when I was just talking with him like a best friend, he he is my best friend. I do believe that. I still say that to everyone. Like, he, Lord, you are my best friend. You're always going to be there with me. And I know whatever you have in life for me and for everyone around me is for the best. And I really hope I can forgive those people. I hope you give that forgiveness in my heart that I can forgive those people who, who just broke me so bad but thank you for everything and forgive everyone that's it and i just don't want to hold that crutch so i can repair myself amen i mean i think i need to learn how to pray from you <laughs> you just said an amazing prayer and you can it's recorded listen to yourself later you, I will. <laughs> you just you just did an amazing prayer. I need to learn from you how to pray now. You see, you called me out to, <laughs> a five minutes ago. I was teaching how to pray, and now I'm listening to her prayer. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. I I always believe that God is my best friend, and I always talk to him like a best friend. So I don't want to say let, let I don't want to say anything to him because he knows. Let me tell you what happened. You see, because yeah. you spoke from your heart, your prayer is touching everybody listening including me, I was listening. I'm a person who have a difficulty to listen for long, you know, because always people say something wrong. And I was waiting for you to say something wrong. You could, I, it was so beautiful. So your, your prayer was really beautiful. And because it's coming from your heart, it, because it was you praying, not someone else, it was real. It was Thank you. valuable. It was very touchy. And I advise you to listen to yourself after we finish. Go and listen to what you just said. It's amazing. And let your parents hear it. 
because it's going to touch your heart <laughs> honestly so oh that is too fast now that is too soon okay they will flip out <laughs> yeah so i i say to you i'm so grateful for the lord that you call me even though usually i don't take calls from ex muslims but the yeah. lord he always he, you know he is he 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 send he send the good ones in my way and today he sent me two good people one maybe from yeah. pakistan the i don't know who this one as well he was amazing yeah the lord is amazing and his work is amazing and i want you my sister you know to to never give up with your parents first you need to remember to to love them you know even if they are yeah. not accepting christ you have to love them and talk to them based on love not based on they are wrong based on love you guide them based on love you bring them to christ and love never fail the bible says love never fail what fail is when we don't have love in our action so would love you will win and today you are a winner for the bible says the lord said a happiness in the kingdom of the father will be for one saved soul so today the lord himself he have a great happiness because you today accepted him and he love you thank you so much cp thank you my sister Feel thank you so much any time and if you want me to talk to your parents in private which is something i do always by the yeah. way in private because mm. sometimes they might be you know they don't like to be in public you just tell me when you know and i will be happy to give them my time they, they speak english yeah i do because, i do because you know my urdu is not so it's so so you know <laughs> <laughs> i like i i cannot speak urdu that well as well oh, so i i I'm, actually so do I'm not know about... yeah okay <laughs> it's actually a little shame because i cannot speak bengali or hindi that well but i think english is my most strongest language for me I speak all languages, but what happened? I will tell you the true, true story. I am Zulkarnain. Yeah. Somebody hit me in my head, and the first <laughs> horn came. And when they hit me, the first horn came. I first the, the Urdu language, and then I came again. I told them worship Allah, and then they hit me with the second uh, hammer, and I get the second horn. And this is how I forget my English. So now I don't know how to speak English. I don't speak. I, you know, I don't know what I'm speaking anyway. <laughs> true story. Okay, okay, my sister. Well, I'm happy for you. Thank you so much. Good to have you, and I will be happy again too. If you have a friends. who they are muslims or etc invite them and we will be happy to have them live on air with us I will, I will. and the lord is our thank you so much right. thank god you. bless you god bless you take care bye bye